So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the uh, typical uh, um, OSA screen. So when you turn on your test set, this is um, based on the uh, RXT1200, by the way, but the uh, 400 is similar once you open up the, the OSA operation. It's just getting to it will be a little bit different. Um, so this is the OSA application button, and when you press that, it will load this screen. And from this point, you have to make a decision on what you are attempting to use the OSA for. And a window will pop up when you push that window, and it would display the various test modes that are available. Spectrum just basically means I just want to see the spectrum. Uh, I don't necessarily have any specific ITU uh, conditions that I want to apply. Uh, DFB is I want to check the... Uh, uh, DFB lasers, and then these are where you would get channel analysis and you can do drift monitoring uh, specifically of channels that uh, are in the uh, ITU grid. Once you choose a test mode, you will get a settings that is specifically for the mode of operation that you plan to uh, be using the tool on. And you'll find that uh, if you play with the unit, that the setup screen can be different depending on the test mode that you actually choose. Um, so this is, this is just one of the uh, settings, um, setup screens that you may see. Over here, this is information that you can go ahead and use to trigger um, for flagging when any uh, event needs to be logged uh, and highlighted on the uh, results uh, table. This span power here is basically um, where you can measure all the energy generated from here to there or between two markers. This button here uh, controls um, if you want OSNR, what type of uh, um, position from the ITU uh, grid do you want to measure noise floor? Because this is the position of the noise floor in relationship to the ITU grid. Or you can do your own user's uh, size. Or we can um, choose to do the in-band and I'll talk a little bit more about NBAM a little bit later. Select any of these field to pop up the entry and type in the value and apply it. And then click OK to exit and uh, make the uh, changes permanent. If you are just messing around, you don't want to change anything, just hit cancel. So if you do not connect a fiber or a light signal, to your OSA, but you choose to hit a sweep button. There are two sweep buttons. A single sweep means just scan at one time, the full spectrum. And in this instance, you'll see that um, you've got a straight line on the very, very lower part of the display window. This line and this position of the line is telling me that my module is installed, I can read it fine, but you have not put any light into the uh, test port. Repeat sweep is just continuous scanning uh, until I tell you the stop. There are three color indicators, yellow being the current and active um, activity on your network, min hode when you check this, will be a blue, which tells you in the repeat sweep, um, what is the minimum level detected on any point in the spectrum. Max hold is if any signal appeared and no longer is there, it will show in red again during that uh, test cycle. 
the um, rest of the buttons, peak search, channel search, um, we'll go through that in our live demo, but I think it's pretty explanatory. Uh, when you have a spectrum, tell me what the highest one is, what, what channel has the highest power level. Uh, channel search means give me an update of everything that's on the screen. Okay, so earlier I alluded to the fact that there is span power to measure all the light energy that's being put into that fiber. Um, the OSA has a maximum um, power level of uh, plus 30. So if you are, um, if the user knows that they um, are pumping out more than um, plus 30, they need to put an external attenuator uh, before they connect to the OSA or risk damaging. And whatever attenuation value they uh, use to lower their uh, signal, um, they just need to enter the value of the attenuator and I will rescale accordingly uh, so that the information displayed will be correct. Over here, this feature temporarily has been deactivated, um, but when it is reactivated, this one allows you to load previously saved test results and view it on the uh, test set screen. And the same as the other settings, you can change these and when you tap this, it'll pop up this window. I'll polish on the uh, tip of the ferrule. So never mix match the uh, blue and the green connectors uh, or else you will definitely uh, run in some strange test results. So, if you are monitoring um, and want to know what changes may be occurring over time, as I said, you would use this button. For a demo, for the most part, I typically just use a single sweep, um, but again, it really depends on what the customer is specifically looking for. So. Once you connect up to a network and you hit either the single sweep or the um, uh, repeat sweep, you'll get something on the screen. This screen that you're looking at actually is viewable only if you have one of the ITU analysis uh, test modes. Um, the histogram uh, that's displayed here is, is the giveaway to let you know that you are doing uh, one of the uh, ITU grid uh, test modes. And when you have these, as you can see, you've got the channel number, but you also have these bars that correlate with each of these channels. And then um, if there are any issues, you'll have different colors that will um, um, be generated as a result of uh, having some that are uh, not uh, compliant with uh, expectations. If you tap one of these bars, you're going to go ahead and be able to get a screen that looks like this. So if you see, it says this is channel 21. So this is the bar that we tapped. And now it just gives you a quick look to see what is occurring with channel 21. And this has a 20 minute buffer that, um, of data that you can view at any given time. This is for power level for this particular channel. This is for any drifting that may be occurring with regards to the highest power level for that channel. And then this is the uh, OSNR for that channel. Down here we have date time stamp information. Now if you want to move to say channel 28, then you would go ahead and change your channel number until you see 28 reflected on top. If you want to look only at the uh, results in tabular format, hit this display mode button and it will toggle you to a new view. And if you have more than one page of information to look at, just choose your page number and view. 
the type of data that you would get is the channel information and then the current software will show you either the wavelength or the frequency and will tell you what the peak wavelength is and what the center. Uh, what that is is uh, 3 dB down from the peak value. Uh, what is the midway point of the channel at that point? And then again, this information is how far is the peak um, from the actual ITU uh, channel. And then this is the power. Currently, we uh, have peak power measurement. We will be adding in the settings the ability for users to get the uh, integrated um, power value. We have OSNR, and again, there's the standard measurement technique or the one of the IOSNR techniques that I will cover a little bit more briefly, and then the uh, 3 dB and 20 dB uh, bandwidth resolution for each channel. So I have a, a question. What is the minimum level requirement I have uh, to run uh, in situations where a 90-10 splitter was needed to provide access to the composite light and not enough signal level was presented for the OSA to acquire a signal? Okay, so basically um, for the OSA to be able to, t to, be able to detect the signal, um, I need to have the power coming out from the system to be at least a negative 40 dBm level for me to be able to detect it. Okay. Now, Earlier I showed you and I referred to alarm thresholds. Any, any events that uh, violate the uh, uh, desired settings will be tracked on this view. Again, I just click display and then I change to this view so you can see uh, the daytime stamps and uh, anything that happened on any specific channel and what it was that uh, triggered the alarm. Okay, um, zoom. Let me talk a little bit about the operation. This button here is a threshold button. These are uh, event markers, blue and green. This is the magnifier zoom button. This is the shift button. This is, uh, give me the full uh, screen view again. So if you were to hit this button, then go on your screen, click and drag and release. If this box goes from green to white, it will uh, complete the zoom request. If you release when the box is still green, it will ignore your request because um, we don't have at, at the current uh, software the ability to give you that granularity of uh, zooming. Uh, we are going to be uh, uh, updating the GUI to make it a little bit more um, uh, user-friendly and a little bit more adaptive uh, in line with uh, um, the needs of customers to be able to zoom in and uh, change settings on the fly. So that will be coming. And as once you do the zoom, It'll just rescale everything on the screen for you. The uh, information will not uh, be um, any different than it was previously. When you have a test result that you want to save, press this button. And what this will do is it will um, go ahead and pop up a screen and give you the ability to either save using date time stamp automatically or you can override and custom create your own file name in there. Once you have saved the information, go into the utilities 
select files and check which one you want to do. If you want to see the report, because in addition to saving the data, we generate an HTML uh, report file for people to use and they can email around. Or if you prefer, you can select a file and then just do to USB and that will copy it to the USB stick. And then you can look at the HTML on your PC. Let's talk a little bit about the competition. So I've got two uh, comparisons for you. The first one being the uh, 4500. Um, the 4500 has a C band, C plus L, or C through L and full band, as I referred to. And in the 4500, we have the ability to combine the full band and C band, or if there is a demand, uh, we could combine full band and C plus L. What is different about this? The difference is, like I said, the uh, spectral range in which we can uh, make measurements. But the most important thing is resolution bandwidth. Resolution bandwidth dictates how um, closely spaced the channels can be for our OSA to be able to resolve and display each channel as a single uh, entity on our screen. So, for example, on our C-band, and again, remember this is the 4500, this is 0 0.15 typical performance. The C plus L band is 0 0.2, uh, excuse me, 0 0.32 nanometer. And this is the distance where the signal is 3 dB down from its peak value. And for full band, again, remember, uh, full band, a lot of times people use that because uh, they're doing CWM. We have a 3.5 nanometer. If you take a look at the competitors, I threw the Avi's uh, 110 module, the X4-5230, and the Yokogawa 6, uh, 6375. You'll see that these guys will be able to provide 0 0.1 in the C-band. So we, we knew that this was not quite as good as the um, competitors. Um, but we also knew that uh, we could get there. And uh, next week we're announcing the uh, new OSA family that will provide that, and I'll cover that next. So as far as the performance is concerned, this number here tells you um, what the light signal needs to be in order for the machine to be able to even make any measurement whatsoever for the 4500. This is the channel spacing. The lowest we can support in this design is 37.5, which is just enough to be able to detect um, the uh, flex grid channel spacing for uh, 37.5. Our measurement time is going to be five seconds or less. The measurement time for the competition will vary. Expo tells you it's one second, but again, that depends on the situation. There's a lot of uh, little footnotes to read to see what the worst case scenario can be. Um, for um, <clears throat> and, and again, this is for just regular OSNR uh, testing of five seconds. For us, it's five seconds whether it's OSNR or uh, R. I-band technique, and for these guys, uh, for the Viavi, it can be over 35 seconds um, to do the in-band testing. And this one's a little bit faster. This one runs at about uh, 15 seconds, if I recall correctly. As I said, next, next week, we're officially launching the new 4510. Um, I'm trying to get uh, modules um, built so that we can provide them 
uh, for you. For those of you who have already uh, got the word in advance, um, the performance is going to be 0 0.1 on the C-band, which puts us right in the same ballpark. And the, uh, the difference on this is if you want L-band, I can give you C and L. I can't give you C through L. And that's why I show specifically that there will be a gap. Um, I can go up to 1625, then I must stop until I switch to the L-band, which is 1571. But that's the only way for me to provide the two improved resolution performance. And there's no change to the full band. So um, this will um, help you address the uh, resolution issue. The rest of the specs are um, the same as the 4500. Oh, one thing I should point out, the 4510 is a little bit more money. Um, we have not uh, released the price list, but it probably will, will be uh, released either next week or the following week at the latest. Amplified and reamplified, which then creates some uncertainty as to what the true optical signal to noise floor would be for six signals that traverse through multiple rotums. So let's look at how uh, OSNR is measured. Your traditional method was defined and when the systems were first on rolled out for WDM, there was no problems with clearly measuring what the noise between channels were. And the peak is here. You have a choice. You can use the noise floor to the left side, the right side, or the average of the noise floor. Because amplifiers are not flat, there's a curve when you uh, look at your signals. And this is referred to as out of band. In other words, I'm measuring the noise that's not within the um, signal, but just to the side of the signal. And that's the traditional uh, OSNR measurement technique. And then there is three different methods of doing in-band that has been approved. Method one is if you have overlapping signals and you're interested in doing OSNR, find the empty channel that's within a few um, channel spacings of this and use the noise floor from that channel. The assumption is that if you're not too far away from this specific channel, then the noise floor curve will not be that uh, far changed in its uh, signature. This is the technique that the uh, 4500 is using. Ban uh, method B is when you have this type of scenario, overlapping spectrum, run another narrow filter to block the overlapping signal so that the only energy that you get will be within this and you'll not see the effects of this and by doing that I'm able to go ahead and be able to measure my noise here and my noise here and this is the technique that um, EXFO uses in their 5230 um, but this technique basically will only be able to give you results um, up to about 20 dB in performance. And it does require additional uh, scanning of the spectrum. Uh, method C, um, which is basically uh, read your s signal and then resweep by turning off every channel one at a time in the spectrum. And this is the technique that Viavi is using. And 
this is also referred to as pol uh, polarization nullification. Um, this technique works if there is only unmuted. Oh, sorry. Somehow I muted myself. So as I was uh, saying, this is the technique that Viavi has deployed. Uh, it's referred to as polarization nullification. This in-band OSNR technique only works if you are uh, using uh, one other polarization state. But if you have multi-polarization states, you cannot uh, use this technique. Okay, so since there aren't any questions, um, I'm going to move us over to a live demo. What I have here is I have um, 10 100 gig uh, channels being pumped uh, into my OSA through a coupler. And at the same time period, I have one channel that is being transmitted. Uh, using a uh, 4111 OLS. Um, so this channel here, it, I've got this set up so that it is in um, repeat sweep mode. And I'm going to turn this on right now so you can see all three. And I've just changed the uh, light source from the um, um, 4111 and then I re-update it. So this was the um, old tuning and this is the current state. And as I shared with you, this is the information for the and then the span power from the full spectrum setup. Let me show with you what the settings were that I chose. I chose 100 gigahertz and I chose the OSNR using the standard technique. Now if I were to choose, see this is showing information so about 20 to 22. So I'm going to stop that sweep and then I'm going to change it over to this technique. And you see now that I'm getting a measurement and this tells you that I'm using the, um, um, looking for the noise floor near and now I'm registering that the actual noise floor is down around here, but uh, I'm not going to bother to report anything because it exceeds 35. Okay. If you want to have the units in frequency, click this button and now everything will be in um, frequency instead of in uh, nanometers. I'm going to stop this real quick. If I choose to do 100 gigahertz, oops, I didn't stop. Choose the 100 gigahertz.
put it in repeat sweep again. Zoom. I'm not trying to do it this way. Um, we're we're not getting this video. We're oh. you know, stuck at the system powering off screen. Sorry about that. Is that better? Yeah. So, this now is just uh, going to um, allow someone to monitor power levels and uh, drift from the uh, ITU channel and also any changes to the OSNR. And by tapping the uh, right left arrow, you see that there is a uh, vertical bar here. That vertical bar reflects the value information. So by selecting the right or left arrow, I update and see at that specific timestamp um, what was happening. And you would only do this obviously if you see something occur. And then if you wanted to change your channel, you can change the channel information. And when you're done, you just go back. Sorry, there's like a little delay with the review tool versus uh, my live button pushing. So I'm kind of going back and forth. Now, I'm going to give you one other look here. And this time I'm going to change it because I'm injecting just one channel. And I've got 1533. <laughs> Take. 